Hello and let's talk about why 2021 is just going to be the best year ever. Now jokes aside, we know that 2020 was quite bad. There was a pandemic which affected every aspect of life, including the economy for so many months. And what makes it worse is that we're living under a government and a policy framework which encourages the top corporates, the top 1%, while the rest of us manage, struggle to just keep or maintain our standard of living or not descend into poverty. And we're also talking about some of the poorest people in the world here. And there's also the fact that over the past year, we have seen an intensification of the attacks on institutions, of the attacks on secularism, on democracy, on freedom of expression. All this paints quite a grim picture. And we know the people are fighting back. We know that the peasants, for instance, the farmers have been gathering around Delhi, trying to protect their livelihoods. We saw the workers take out a huge strike last month and even before. But nonetheless, the fact does remain that even going into 2021, what we're likely to see is that this small 1% is likely to increase its assets, it's likely to increase, is likely to benefit much more, while the rest of us don't really get any benefits economically speaking. We talked to senior journalist Anandya Chakravarti on why this is the case. Thank you, Anandya, for joining us. So, uh, in media organizations, is the time for the year enders where everything under the sun, we sort of look back what happened in the previous year, look ahead to how the following year looks. And our discussions over the past year, past couple of months at least, not very, a lot of grim scenarios we talked about. Yes. But one thing we have uh, regularly focused on is the state of the middle class itself. And yes. this is obviously a very important marker of how the country's economy is moving ahead and you know whether more people can enter the middle class, whether the existing middle class has a chance to expand its uh, style, lifestyle, its standard of living, these are key questions. So maybe first, could you quickly take us through how the year has been for this group and uh, this section and a basic idea of what might lie ahead? You know, the middle class essentially has, uh, for the past couple of years, just been looking at what in business parlance is called green shoots. So they're told that now it's recovery. Recovery is coming anytime. But actually, they've been waiting for this recovery. And... Uh, uh, of course, uh, you know, we belong to, we might know, not know this, but we are actually part of a very affluent part of India, right? So we might actually not believe that we are affluent, but compared to the rest of India, we are affluent. We are probably part of the top 2%, 3% of India, not more, uh, I mean, not wider than that, probably even less if you look at it. And uh, uh, so the point is that None of us, none of that middle class, even the affluent class, because frankly, when you talk of middle class, it can be anything. But those who buy things are that top affluent 5% of India. Rest of them just basically somehow survive or buy very little. Right? Um, these people have not seen good days or the Ache Din, which were promised in 2014, for a very, very long time. They've been told that things will recover. There have been, the, the only thing from which they've had a relatively steady income is financial. So if they have investments in mutual funds or in the stock markets, they've had some kind of a flow coming in from there. And of course, if you keep it in a bank, as you know, that uh, you know, in our parents' generation, bank deposits were good sources for you right. to put your money and retire up. And now, of course, that's completely gone. Right? Um, it barely keeps pace with, even in a fixed deposit, it's, you're going to end up barely keeping pace with inflation. So the middle class job opportunities for the middle class, yes, especially I would say younger people, because those like me who are uh, near 50 have already seen uh, uh, the boom of, uh, you know, from 2004 to 2008 in India. Uh, those like who you who are younger have probably missed that, but didn't, were still in that afterglow. I see people who are joining now, they, uh, they, they're facing a great reduction in this standard of living compared to what even their parents had. Right. So people who are in their 20s today are uh, not able to understand how to live the lifestyle their parents gave them. And again, I'm talking about the affluent people because they don't earn what uh, their parents expected them to or what they expected to in India. So uh, they, many of them probably still live with their parents and almost treat their salaries as part pocket money. So this is a problem that the middle class has been facing. Now, uh, COVID may, has made obviously things much worse. 
we know that the white collar workers lost a huge number of them lost their jobs a huge number of them took salary cuts some of that i would say about 50 60% of that salary cut has been reinstated in some segments like for instance uh, the finance sector definitely has done very well it salaries have partly been reinstated but still there have been job losses the question is then that how are we seeing this so called recovery taking place we have been hearing about the recovery car sales we know how uh, those car sales might not be real or two wheeler sales right. might not right. be real but still those numbers are out there right so the question again is how did the corp- how did corporate india have these record profits in the exactly. second quarter of 2020 in the middle of a slowdown so i would say that uh, these are questions and the answers to those are pretty grim and i would say that 2021 is going to be a tough year for uh, india's middle class tougher right. than what it is even now probably right. that's actually a interesting and as also in some sense is a very scary diagnosis because uh we've talked we're talking on the one hand about the vaccine there is a lot of hope about how yes. you know this might be the moment which can where we can start thinking of a recovery after all these months after almost a year in lockdown in various forms but what you're saying is that this is actually probably the beginning of yet another very difficult phase for a lot of uh middle yeah. class and white collar employees etc so why would that be so if one looks at the immediate impact of the lockdown right what was the immediate impact companies thought that they're going to basically the market is drying up they're going to lose huge amounts of money they can't afford to keep pe- people on roll so they just let go of people right uh i think they let go of more people than they needed to they took it as an opportunity to let go of people they saw that okay there were let's say someone had uh, was already a middle rung executive in 2008 right the collapse came they continued to stay in that relatively high pay bracket right. so companies have regularly used uh, opportunities to get rid of senior people and replace mm-hmm. them with younger people who will char- who will who they'll pay probably 40% of what right. a senior person right. was being paid so i think this was used as an opportunity to uh, what might be called purge the top bracket purge the management space and get rid of people much more than that was required exactly but as we know that because of the slowdown in china i know that china was the only one which is at positive growth but if china is at positive growth of let's say 1% or something like that uh, the problem with that is that china is the basic essentially guzzles commodities by commodities i mean all raw materials mm. whether it is coal whether it is cement steel you know precious metals rubber uh, all these things uh, petrol and uh, i mean uh, uh, petrol diesel right natural gas everything is actually consumed by china most of it and then converted into uh, finished products pushed out to the world and china itself consumes it's a huge population of relatively uh, with people with a reasonably decent uh, standard of living now because china slowed down china might have positive growth and not be in recession but the fact that it slowed down over two three quarters meant that there was no market for steel cement rubber you know coal and things like that and they completely collapsed now suppose you're producing things what are the three things you need one is raw materials the second is people to work for you and the third is money or capital to buy things right so uh, raw materials became in extremely cheap okay uh, two of these elements which are widely used is of course uh, coal for electricity uh, uh, then crude oil which is converted into plastics which we use and directly fuel which is used and then there is steel and cement which uh, is used across the board uh, all of these became cheap and because of that what we saw essentially was raw material costs of companies dropped sharply in right. these quarters way beyond what they thought they reduced wages their salary bill went down and in some segments it went up marginally which is uh, um, only the banking and finance sector mm-hmm. which obviously did very well right uh, uh, given that the total cost and the rbi was pushing out free money as much as possible right so interest rates went down the cost of capital went down sharply right given that all these costs went down 
even though the companies were not able to match the total volume of sales they had in previous years or the uh, previous year itself the cost fell at a much sharper rate so the only people who gained were these uh, in, in owners of capital corporates they gained now here's the problem china is recovering we know that wuhan is actually out there there's a nightlife which shut down and now they've reopened all the uh, you know bars and restaurants and pe- and that became a big story a couple of right. days ago right so china is completely back in gear it is starting to buy things other countries are recovering we know that india's growth has been the worst even in q2 compared to the rest of the world so mm. other countries are starting to buy commodities again right again uh, the main exporters of commodities many of them are african countries or let's say the gulf what has happened is that their supplies have also shot down we were mm. come down right because of covid and because of that prices are rising right so that particular space cement petrol uh, petrol and diesel not so much but definitely rubber cement coal steel these have all shot up right these prices have gone up so commodity prices are going up and which is why there is also a fear that given inflation what if the rbi increases interest rates if the rbi increases interest rates then cost of capital will also go also up, increase right? Right. right given that the only place left for you is to reduce wages even further mm-hmm. right which is historically exactly what capital does <laughs> and given that there is no unionization especially the middle class hates unions the middle class says unions are terrible they lead right. to loss of you know people don't work they're lazy they want free money now they will face it the right. middle class will face the brunt of the fact that they don't have any collective bargaining power to put pressure on uh, any kind on the government to force corporates to hold wages so i think this is a this is a big big problem for right. uh, for anyone who's in the who's employed in the private sector in general and we know that if the private sector is affected then the unorganized sector is also going to be affected which nice. essentially buys by private i mean the organized corporate sector right actually so in this context like you talked about earlier before this also means that as if wages remain low get cut further there are more firings what we are again seeing is also that there is going to be a even further decline in demand a decline in purchasing power which means the economy continues to remain in the doldrums as it is exactly in fact there is something interesting here as well and uh, what might happen uh, prashant is that right now there's been a rise in uh, um, profit margins in the manufacturing sector right in the financial sector but we know that in construction and all it's been badly hit and if cement and uh, cement steel prices go up construction will be affected badly again right uh, what has happened interestingly is that uh, f- uh, wheat sugar milk prices have collapsed mm-hmm. right or been flat completely quarter on quarter pre- compared to last quarter that might lead to a bit of a recovery in what is called the a uh, food oriented fmcg sector right the uh, the cheese cheese makers the biscuit makers and stuff like that but that's a very small space but it also signals that the uh, farmers right the returns to farmers are also going down right right in relative terms compared to last uh, quarter right? right if it's going down in relative terms and even like compared to last year then even the so called you know we had heard, we've been hearing this fairy tale about recovery coming from the agricultural side from the rural sector even that is not going to happen so there's a huge demand shrinkage coming mm-hmm. and one can sense that also from cmi's consumer sentiment index right which is actually completely collapsed after going up in october september october it has gone sharply down in november and i don't think the december one has still come but november definitely it has gone down sharply so you can see that consumer sentiment people thinking how their life is going to be one year ahead that has gone down very sharply so Absolutely. effectively right. i wouldn't say there is much hope in 2021 uh, for the middle class absolutely and uh, of course this section a section also exists in the most deregulated sphere of the economy as well so even the idea of the government coming in and 
bring pushing yeah. in money for that matter it really doesn't it's difficult no. to visualize exactly no it's not possible it's not right. possible i, I mean the fact the fact is that government when governments give money to corporate sector corporate sector fatten their margins yeah this is well known right they do nothing to actually pass it over why would they their objective is to create profit right, right? if you look at uh, uh, all big corporates are listed they are on the share markets every quarter they have to give their uh, um, income numbers right and what is called an eps which is earning or profit per share if the profit is 100, uh, 1 lakh rupees and there are 100 shares then 100 rupees is uh, earning per share right so people keep looking at that number right and the markets react to a lot of these things what is going to be the earnings what is going to be the profit you can keep saying that oh i paid my workers more right and then your stock price is going to tank right and when your stock price tanks you might not be immediately affected but what happens is that your market value of the company drops Absolutely. you're not be able to raise funds it becomes difficult to leverage in the market so all these things happen so this very process itself is bound to be we know when corporate taxes were cut last year what happened corporates increased their profits it's not as if they passed it on to consumers right prices were cut very marginally right so that's the thing so it is there is no network through which you can pass on anything to the and again in the west if you look at uh, you know the minimum wages or the minimum standard of living right if i look at europe so if dole is being given in europe uh, employment ben- unemployment benefit is being given in europe that's a decent living we people like us might be able to live off unemployment <laughs> benefit in england right? right or in europe but you know pm kisan is 6000 rupees a year so the government now says that okay you lost your job at some big corporate you were a sales manager here 6000 rupees per year is your thing. Right. <laughs> right you probably spend that on t- uh, two meals in uh, some restaurant so right. yes I think one of the things that has happened is some of the middle class has somehow saved because of not spending on so much certain in, uh, kinds of discretionary. Right. That's the only thing which is keeping it going. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Anandya, for speaking to us. Thanks a lot, Prashant. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back on Monday with more news from India and around the world. Until then, keep watching News Click.